I'm glad we're uh, two or more gathered. He's in the midst. Let's all stand and sing. Just a little talk with Jesus. God bless you for being here. We're here to worship our Savior, our King, our Redeemer. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made it. All right, man, let's hear his power. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faith cry and he will answer. By and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turning and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk where Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my passage drear without a ray of cheer and then a cloud and a light of day. The mist of sin may rise the the starry sky, but just a little talk with Jesus makes it. All right, come on, man, now. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our fading cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn it, and you know a little prayer is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it. I may have doubts and fear, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. This little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faith and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel it, a prayer will turn it. Then you know a little prayer is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It just came in my mind that feel a little prayer will turning. Uh, Y'all have any idea what that's talking about? Does anybody have any historical? I've got my guess is that, uh, you know, you can get these lampshades that have little cuttings into them or whatever, and you can put fire, you know, you put a candle underneath it, and the, the, the heat will make that thing turn. And the only thing I can think of, Gary, this is your, your category because you like historical songs, is uh, some people used to say it's not a biblical song talking about pagan prayer wheels. Well, uh, the Buddhists and stuff have these little sh- uh, cylinders that they would roll like that. But I think it's talking about in the day and time before lights that uh, they would they would you know carve out prayers on shades or whatever. And at nighttime when they would light that candle as they would pray, uh, that little prayer wheel will be turning. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Hey, it works Amen. Works for you. Work, hey, works for you. <laughs> hey, good. That's how that's how rumors get started, right? Uh, uh, well, it's good to have you here tonight. Uh, all of us, uh, some of us are here tonight. Uh, some of us are home. Uh, I, I'm really not here. I'm a figment of your imagination. You're still dreaming, and you just wanted to be in church. No, uh, uh, good to have you back. And we have Gary and Barbara Holt. They're friends of my mom. Good friends of my mom. And uh, moms, uh, uh, they, they, they gallivant. They even took a vacation down to Florida to see my brother and all. They like each other that much. Amen. That's good. But good to, good to have y'all. And uh, mom's going to feed them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all, all through Wednesday. Oh, baked you a pie. A- amen. Baked you a Snicker. Uh, well, okay. And, and she got you some insulin along with it. That's good. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm glad that y'all here. Appreciate you being back. There's folks that uh, just aren't here for whatever. You know what, how it is. We're not going to go over that. Let's pray for them. Uh, let's pray for the LED light that's supposed to last for 10 years and it's already out. That makes me. That makes me mad. That makes me mad. I'm telling. Let's. I'm gonna quit for that. Stop complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm. I'm, I'm making an observance. I love how mom preaches to me. Don't you? All right. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, amen. Everybody else is scared, right? Um, junior, I, I failed the cognitive test, by the way, in prayer meeting, prayer room. Junior passed. I only got a half a point, right? I mean, I passed the last one, but I heard the answer, so that wasn't kind of fair. But uh, anyway, you know, the, if you were in Sunday school, you know what we're talking about. If you're not, look it up and watch it. So let's pray. Let's pray for those that are not feeling well. I know one person told me they had an appointment in the morning. They had to stay home tonight to prepare for that. Some of y'all probably figured what that is. And the old devil's doing what he can to distract everybody. So let's, uh, let's pray. Pray for the election. Amen. Amen. The election is going to be a landslide. Hallelujah. But like I said, we're a winner either way. So let's bow and pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for our church. Thank you for those that are here tonight. Lord, thank you for the Holt family. And I pray you'll bless them as they just take a little vacation. And mom, enjoy their company. Lord, we pray that you would be with the election. We do pray for the righteous to reign. Lord, that we would accept whatever whatever happens and Lord we'll just trust you no matter what uh, uh, we're on the winning side because of it and we pray for those that are uh, in physical problems or there may be sickness or maybe uh, uh, having doctor's appointment those that are, have some illnesses Miss Lola Miss jo Mr. John pray for them pray for David too Lord you touch him and uh, Lord pray for Ronnie Acock and you'd help him in his uh, in that situation Lord thank you for your love and bless this service may we all have open hearts and ears uh, to hear in Jesus' name, amen. Just turn around and just wave a second. At the family. Ronnie Acock, if he ha if it hadn't spread around the church, he he has he's in the hospital, had a brain bleed, um, and a brain bleed. Ronnie Acock, he was a preacher that uh, was with us, he and his wife, and uh, he took a church. He was he was he's probably close to seventy now. Uh, his wife suddenly died last year. I mean, she was looked like in uh, great health, and she died in the night, and and uh, just real tragic. Uh, uh, he had had cancer prior, but he was doing really well. So, uh, again, was blank. I mean, is he unconscious? Do you know? Do we know any details? He's conscious, but just having to deal with that. So let's pray. I know some small brain bleeds you can, like stroke victims have them, and they still they just may not. Fluids building up. Let's, let's pray. Let's keep Ronnie in our prayers. Um, uh, th I got some information here that's going to make you smile. I hope, or make you reflect. Um, it's the ABCs. We're going to do A, B, A through Z. Uh, everybody wants is the title. Okay. A, the ability, the ability, but not the answer. So you say everybody wants the ability, but not the answer. B, the blessing, but not the burden. The comfort, but not the cares. The dignity, but not the discipline. The enjoyment, but not the employment. The fun, but not the fight. The glory, but not the groaning. The help, but not the helper. The inspiration, but not the intercession. The joy, but not the job. The knowledge, but not the kneeling. The Lord, but not the labor. The ministry, but not the master. The notoriety, but not nothingness. Uh, the opportunity, but uh, not the oppressions. The power, but not the price. The quality, but not the quietness. The recognition, but not the responsibility. The song, but not the sacrifice, the talk, but not the tears, the unction, but not the uncomfortable, the victory, but not the vision, the win, but not the weight, the extreme, but not the example, the youth, but not the yoke, the zeal, but not the zenith. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. Now, um, uh, let's, I will just do this one. These are kind of fun. This, this, this section is called the old geezer. Who? What person pops in your mind when you say the when you say the old geezer? Uh, do, don't, don't say me. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, Richard, we were not going to put Junior under there. All right, this is. But I could see I maybe I could see Junior doing this. I could at, at some point, not right now, but at some point. And and, and uh, Cody, you'll appreciate this. An old old geezer uh, uh, says to his buddy. I hear you're getting a. Uh, hear, you, hear you getting married? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, ha, have I, have I met her? Nope. Uh, is she good? Is she good looking? Not especially. Can she cook? No, not really. Not very well. Is she loaded? Nope. Poor as a church mouse. Well, then why in the world would you want to marry her? Because she still drives.
All right, how many of y'all think of this when we, the title is The Hearing Aid? <laughs> Who needs one? The old guy was talking to his neighbor, telling him about his new hearing aid and he had just got. He said, it cost a fortune, but it was worth it. I, it works perfectly. Really? This neighbor said, what, uh, what kind did it? He said, 1030. I said, what kind is it? He said, 1030. <laughs> All right, two more questions and we're done. What is the most common remark made by 50 plus year olds when they browse an antique store? I remember these. That, 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 you got it right. You got it. You need these, don't you, John? You, yeah. The seniors may are okay. Number two, and we're done. Uh, why? Why should fifty plus people use valet parking? Because you forget where your car is. Hey, that's right. That's. Uh, raise your hand if if you can relate to June. I mean, she, she's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some little, little Mary Hart doeth good like a medicine. Amen. Uh, next Sunday, we, yes, go ahead. Sure. Oh, you looked it up. Oh. Uh -huh. So it has an African American uh, history. Wow. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Amen. That's good. Uh, what else do you notice? Richard's on Google and during church. <laughs> next next Sunday we have a special. We're gonna and I hope I don't forget. <laughs> uh, we have a graduate of the F FBI, the Faith Bible Institute. Carolyn Lund graduates <laughs> in this. In this once sealed envelope is your diploma. And so we're going to walk you down the aisle uh, on next time. I want everybody to see it so it would help promote FBI. And, uh, and so, uh, and, and they probably, they may be here. I don't know. She's going to have a new baby in her hand by then, hopefully, right? Wednesday at the latest. So we need to pray for their, uh, the delivery and all that goes well. You delivering in Little River or? Wow. She, they just delivered too many of your babies. <laughs> well, uh, that's good. Uh, and we've got names. If it's a boy, it is Josiah Luke. Girl? Eliza Hope. How about that? Eliza. You know a song, don't you, Junior? See, when y'all come here, you do flashbacks. Just, just, just have flashbacks. Well, I'm glad you're here. Let's sing again. You ready? We'll take up the evening offering. But let's stand and let's sing all three stanzas uh, till the storm passes by. I don't know if that's indicative of what the message is going to be, but here we go. In the dark of the midnight have I often hid my face while the storms howl above me and there's no hiding place in the crash of the thunder gracious lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of the hand keep me safe till the storm passes by many times satan whispers there's no need to try for there's no end of sorrow there's no hope by and by but i know thou art with me and tomorrow i'll rise when the storm Yeah, 
the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky is mine. When the long nights have ended and the storms come no more, Amen. let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore in the land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm is mine till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of the hand keep me safe till the storm is mine. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's going to keep us safe. Uh, I do need uh, some help right after church. Uh, it won't take 10 minutes to just everybody put the, uh, the t few tables and uh, games back up in this thing. Uh, you, you teenagers, yeah, everybody kind of get them done. It'd be great. Uh, we were really blessed. The, the bouncy house has worked out well. I know we were trying to get your friend, but uh, they, they, uh, Hannah, uh, uh, Fike, uh, McLam now, um, she, uh, she has a company and we got both of those for 150 bucks for two days. So that was, It's all right. It, it, it worked out. It worked out good. They got a little yes. bit of money. Everybody did a great job. And uh, uh, now we're going to miss Miss June's going to sing in just a moment. But uh, let's pray for the offering. We got to, got to give give our hearts. Oh, give our hearts. Uh, give our life to win souls. Wouldn't that be wonderful, uh, Brother Dallas? Would you lead us? Yes, Lord, touch him. Yes. Yes. Amen. Maybe see you. Miss June, appreciate Miss June and uh, and the work that she does uh, helping in the school as well. Appreciate uh, she's going to sing. Amen. I just come into a valley, one like I've never been before. I keep searching for a way out, 
Seem like padlocks on all the doors Oh, there must be another sunrise Another sunset that I'll see God will make this trial a blessing That's the love He has for me God will make this trial a blessing Though it sends me to my knees Though my tears flow like a river Yet in Him there's sweet relief There's no need to get discouraged There's no need to talk defeat God will make this trial a blessing And the whole wide world will see I was not the first one To come into this place You see, every child of God This test he must face It is here that God will mold you and make you what you ought to be. God will make this trial a blessing. Just be patient, you will see. Now I'm standing on the mountain and looking back, I can see. When I was in that lowest valley, his strong hand was leading me. Oh, it's good to see the sunshine and to taste sweet victory. God has made this trial a blessing. Oh, the grace He gives to me. God will make this trial a blessing, though it sends me to my knees. Though my tears flow like a river, yet in Him there's sweet relief. There's no need to get discouraged. God will make this trial a blessing And the whole wide world will see God will make this trial a blessing Though it sends you to your knees Though your tears flow like a river Yet in Him there's sweet relief There's no need to get discouraged There's no need to talk defeat God will make this trial a blessing And the whole wide world will see Hadn't heard that song, Lord Help, in 20 years. I reckon that is a great song. And uh, what a blessing. God will. What's the theme this? You think this today? Of uh, of Tuesday, we're, we're facing this. What's going to happen? Uh, not that I would want uh, the, the the that one side uh, that's barely half there to win, but you know what? You know what happened if we would lose our rights as Christians? It, it'd make us more serious. It, it would really separate. It would really separate those that are serious about serving the Lord and those that aren't. Uh, it's typically when you get in a fight, you find out where's your faith and, and what's important to you. We've got it easy. I can see it in my own kids, my own my own children's lives about how how easy I make it. I I hate to be mean. I'm good at it, but I hate to be mean at she- to Shepherd or to the girls because uh, you, know, you just don't. Ha- Sometimes I, I I think back to mom's here and, and I embarrass her in front of her friends. But sometimes she was mean and we didn't understand. But I do now. Uh, made us go blow the, go, not blow, excuse me, go sweep the the 50 foot by 25 foot driveway during 30 mile an hour wind with 11 pine trees in the yard. And she'd go out there and sweep that thing. Go out there and sweep. Sweep it. She'd be mean. You know, be mean. We'd be sweeping and get one half done and then come back and have to go sweep again and I'd go out there and do it again. And then go rake the yard. Just go rake the yard. Just go rake. She'd, but I understand that now. And I turned out all right. Shepherd, we get home. <laughs> he has a blower. <laughs> the, the hardest thing in this is, is cranking the blower, right? <laughs> anyway, well, uh, glad that you're here. I'm in a good mood today. I, I'm going to tell you how good God is. I'm just going to brag a little bit. Are y'all ready to brag on the Lord? Uh, uh, sitting at home, and you're kind of feeling yucky, just kind of, uh, and uh, as soon as church time got around, I... I, I, I I pulled my tie back up, tuck in my shirt, and I'm getting my trunk. I said, man, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good and still do. 
It's amazing what God will do for you if you want, if you want, to, want a little help. Uh, God will give you, put a little energy in your tank, and that's good. Um, tonight I want to talk about reaching the lost. And uh, as we close out the, this year's vision, you know, who knows what this year's vision is? Seeing Him who's invisible. Uh, I want to look at what, the, what God's vision is, just for a second. Uh, Luke 19.10. Turn over there, Luke 19.10. I'm just going to read that one verse. The vision of the Lord uh, for His people, for the world. In, in Luke 19.10. And uh, do you think as believers, if we're truly born again, we should try to at least capture this at some point in our life? capture this vision, uh, obtain this vision, have a similar vision. Don't you believe that we ought to at some point in our Christian life? Now, I understand that everybody's different levels. Everybody uh, uh, understands differently. But this is the core of God's vision. And, and we see it summed up in Luke 19.10. If you're there, say amen. amen. It says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was what? So God came, His Word came to seek and to save that which was lost. So our vision should be being the disciple, the ambassador, uh, the part of that royal priesthood. Our vision should be seeing Him who's invisible so that we can understand God's, God's vision of winning the lost. Because you're not going to win certain people. I'm not going to win certain people. But there are people to win. The fields are wide unto harvest and there's few laborers. Uh, I believe with, with this vision... Uh, God gives us, He gives us sense to understand that there's more than just the Ten Commandments, which most Baptists can't name two of them. Uh, but He gave us a commission. Think of that. There's the Ten Commandments, and, but He gave us a commission. But we got New Testament commandments to love uh, the Lord, Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy uh, soul, with all thy might, and love thy neighbor as what? Oh, right. So why is that? That's part of God's vision of, of winning them to Christ. You love them. But we live in such a time where uh, we don't really want... Now it's even worse with uh, everybody scared of getting sick. Uh, worse to try to talk to your neighbors and talk to people about Christ. But uh, the, the, the difference between life and death, eternity in hell, eternity in heaven is at, is at stake. So He gave us a commission. It's called the Great Commission. It's in the first five books of the New Testament. We'll go over that in a minute. It is a command that involves... Uh, a role for us as God's children. It is not an option uh, or it's not for certain people or certain types, but it's for every one of His children. Now, uh, everybody going to be a, a, just a, you know, winning people left and right? No, I think that the problem we have in uh, is fundamentalism is in, in some places they, they kind of make it a, a, a challenge. Uh, hey, hey, how many did you win to Christ this week? And how many did you win? And they give out little soul winning, but I think that's dangerous. Because then it's now, it's just by getting a notch in your belt. I think it's, and I think we got to be careful that it's not easy believism. That, you, oh, come on, just pray this prayer and you'll be saved. No, it's not like that. You, they have to be convicted of the Holy Ghost. You have to, you have to uh, obey the Holy Spirit and who you need to talk to. So part of my uh, message tonight is trying to uh, get direction from the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, you can, you can turn there if you like, is one of the uh, verses that deals with the Great Commission. You have in all uh, five of the books uh, somewhere, some, some shape, form, where it says go in all the world. And you know, of course, I've labored this many times, is that we can't go into Africa and Australia, so we support missions. And that's what, it, well, you need to support it too, because if you're not supporting it, uh, then that's going to look bad on you that you could. Now, how much? It's up to you. Uh, at least you could pray for them, which not many people do. We're trying to uh, highlight missions more here in the church, and I appreciate Kelly doing that, bringing that up and getting that together so we can highlight it on Sunday morning. But Dewey Whitfield is our missionary for the week, and we're praying for he and his wife and his, his kids and his ministry. But Mark 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to what? Red, yellow, black, or white, short, tall, fat, stubby, stubborn, arrogant, mean, sweet, kind, everybody. Uh, preach the gospel. What is preaching? Is declaring the truth. You declare the truth. Uh, but what we, what we find is in our life, the, our focus of that, of preaching the gospel, tell, and let me back up and hit this just in case uh, those viewing may not understand this. Uh, some people say, well, that's talking about preachers. That's talking about if someone's called to preach. Every born-again believer is called to proclaim truth. Scriptures will refer to it sometime as to preach. 
You're not a pastor if you preach. You don't have to get up and have a three points in a poem to be a preacher. Women can preach the gospel. What do you think you're doing when you take another lady uh, and sit down with them and say, you know, you must admit that you're a sinner. You must believe that Jesus died for you. You must confess that sin. And believe. You know, that's you're preaching the gospel. You're t- declaring to them. And, and so understand that. Don't try to uh, justify the reason why I don't have to do this or I don't need to do this. And there's a lot of churches and a lot of church people that do that. Uh, but but with, if our focus is gone, direction and purpose is gone too. What in the world? Are we just supposed to go to, sit on a, in a chair or pew for the rest of our life, three days a week? Is that our purpose? Is just to come in here? Because very few ever, and I'm not trying to be hateful, but very few people really understand worship. The very few understand what it means to praise the Lord. I'm not advocating that we got hoop and holler, but it'd be nice when you get a hold of, when, when you know God's got a hold of you, that'd be some outward emotion rather than just, you, you're, you can't wait till it's over. Do you understand what we're talking about? There's, uh, there, there is emotion in serving the Lord. There is uh, a, a worship, the worship, of course, meaning to surrender, to submit to the power of God. God, what would you have me to do? Could God ask you to do something right now? Could God really, could He come to you and whisper in your ear and, and tell your heart that I want you to do that and, he, and you, he can depend on the fact that you'll do it? Don't you nod your head yet. Because my next question is going to be indicting. What has He asked you? Why wouldn't He ask you? He has. He's told us to go in all the world. He's told us, shepherd, He's told us to love the, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind and to love thy neighbor. He's told us to preach. So what, what, what I think some of our problem as a church as we planned out is that we just don't, we, we're not focused as much as we need. We don't see the need. We've lost our direction and our purpose. It's gone. God made us. He saved us to bring Him glory. So how do we give God the glory? We give ourselves. That's the only way. I've taught you this before. The only way, when you say to God be the glory, when you're giving yourself, when you say give God glory, that means you're giving yourself. Lord, whatever you want me to do, what can God ask you to do? There's a list somewhere on your person. And it probably is, it tells God, well, this is only, these are things I'm going to do. Because don't tell me to do that. Don't tell me to go there. Don't tell me to do this. Don't tell me to do that. Because I'm of this, I'm of that, I'm, I'm of this. And you can fill in the blanks. Most of the time our problems are I'm too busy, I've got things going on and all that. And God understands that. That's why He gives messages like this to your pastor so that you can prepare uh, to refocus and to get your purpose and direction right. When we are focused, we can see, see Him clearly, can't we? Ooh. We, we, we know our purpose exactly. We see the condition of man. We see these kids, and, I, and, and honestly, uh, the, the little kids, are, uh, some of them drive me nuts. I mean, it grates my blessed nerves. You know, they just, just, but when, when you know your purpose and direction, you can see that they're just somebody that needs somebody to love on them and tell them about Christ and to educate them and teach them how to bathe. Praise God. See, I remember when we started the bus ministry years ago. We're not started, but it really kind of amp, amped up. And when we got in the building, Remember when I said, "Don't you fuss about walls being marked and all that?" Because I'd rather have the kids here. And there were there were some people that had a hard time. Well, kids ought not to. Kids ought not to do that. They ought not do that. They ought not. I was raised. I was raised. Well, guess what? They're not raised. There is no raising. They're 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 acting like little heathens because they act like they don't. They're they're at their house because they've never been taught anything different. But guess what? How, how do Christians that have the Bible in their, their lap and, and how do Christians who, who heard, have heard preaching and heard Sunday school lessons and, and, and understand what God wants, how many of us are, are kind of just saying, no God, I'm not going to act the way you want me to act. I'm not going to do what you want me to do. But when our focus is clear, we know our purpose, we can see the condition of man, we know that they need Christ, we have a heart for them, a compassion, we're willing to give more of ourselves. we're willing to take more of our time with them. We know that they need our hope, they know, uh, we know that we, they need our Savior, they, uh, we know that they need our focus, they need to see, man, if you could just see what I see, if you could just know what I know. When was the last time you had that kind of conversation with somebody? If you could just know what I know. The most thrill in life is always, the thrills of life are being pursued by, by just about everybody to some degree. 
you know, in, when you're younger, your thrill of, of buying a house, a car, maybe you're older, you, gotta, you have little things, maybe an extra uh, a fund this or a house here or, or whatever. You get older, you get retirement. We're, we're seeking some thrill. Uh, and, and, and that's trying to fill the void of the thrill of life is telling somebody where to find Jesus. And, and you go act, you're actively trying to tell them that God loves them and that God needs them. Well, we're going to be in Luke chapter 15. That's all my introductory. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes, can, can I be straight up? There's sometimes when right before church I say to myself, man, I'm going to get in and get out. I'm so tired. I'm going to go home and go sleep. I just want to relax. I know y'all say that all the time. Say amen. But... Uh, but when I get into it, man, there's just something about that Word of God. It's kind of like, the, it's kind of like that bag of tater chips. And you tell yourself, I'm just going to eat one. I'm just going to lick, the, I'm just gonna lick the, the sauce off of the powder, and I'll be all right. And then half a bag later, you're going, I shouldn't have done that. We, we, at, when we were up there preaching that revival, a, a family in, invited us to their home, a beautiful home, like Anna Green Gables type of home, just beautiful home. And uh, she had these gourmet donuts, bacon, caramel, something donut there. What was it? Bacon maple, excuse me. And I said, well, I've never tried one of those. So I just said, I'm just going to get one. And, and I, well, I took it home after that. <laughs> with like three other donuts, and, and I couldn't resist it. I could not resist temptation. So I had to put them in the ministry. I gave them purpose. <laughs> they didn't go to waste. What does that have to do with the ministry? Nothing. I just thought you'd like to know. Luke chapter 15, verse number 3, look at this. And, and he spake this parable unto them, saying Luke, in, in Luke uh, chapter 15, verse 4, What man of you... Having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, calling or saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found the sheep that which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repent, repent, repenteth more than over 99 uh, and 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. So, uh, let's don't skip over this. This is another message. But do you see the emotion? Do you see the emotion? What's the difference between rejoicing and not re rejoicing? That's emotional. I mean, do you, when you get a gift, is this your emotion? Do you see what, what's the difference? It said over the 99 who think they're just which need no repentance. Now here's another story. Either that what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek uh, diligently till she find it. And uh, when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her, her neighbors together saying, rejoice, uh, rejoice with me. That's another emotion, isn't it? Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels, uh, the angels of God over one sinner that repented. I, just for a second, once you see that emotion, the joy, the rejoicing over a lost person uh, getting saved, that's what this is a figurative of. This is a figure. Uh, it's a typology. It's a rejoicing. The focus of these two, uh, two scenarios is seeking. There's people seeking after that which was lost. They were adamantly... Be, and why is that? Why would somebody seek... Why would you seek after anything that was lost? Well, number one, you had to see value in it. You had to see value in that soul, that kid, that person that you know that sits among us that's lost as a ball on high weeds and has religion and, and has, a, has a baptismal certificate, but they're going to hell. You have to see value in them getting saved. You have to, you're looking for what's important to that individual. When you begin to focus in on who God is, you've seen Him as invisible, you start seeing what God sees. God, God, you know, God cares about everything, but he, what's more important is the soul of that person, that man, woman, boy, girl, and that He's put you near that person. Why can't we say something to them? Why can't we seek them and tell them? Why can't we help them? Why is it, why is it always defaulting when somebody else needs to do it? Somebody, let me tell you something. Uh, if somebody has, else has to do everything you need to do, you must be rich because you've got to hire everything out. Right? 
What do you do when you don't want to pay a plumber 150 bucks to, to, to unclog your, your drain? You go to the store and get you some Drano. Or you go get a plunger and go, pfft, 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 pfft. right, you do it. I didn't want to pay a septic guy $300, so I dug up our septic tank and took the top off. I had to rig some contraction. I looked on YouTube, figure out how to get a sealed top off. And when I looked at that thing, I wish I videoed it. It was a, it was a big muck of, yeah. And so I spent, I spent hours just churning all that stuff up, and I hadn't had to pay nobody nothing. Hey, Amen. What does that have to do with the message? A lot. I, I learned. I, I, I figured it out. I, I, it was a value to me. I didn't want to have to spend money I didn't have on something that I could do. The majority of the church, if we're honest, spends little time seeking the lost or seeking the backslid. I wonder if the preachers called them. I guarantee you, if, if God's put on my heart to call them, I'm going to call them. We only have empty excuses, don't we? I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Yeah, I am. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make you feel better. Is it working? Yeah. <laughs> in Matthew 28, 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, and I'll teach ye all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe what so, uh, all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Acts 1.8, this is God empowering us to do the job, but you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be made, you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and uttermost parts of the earth. Our purpose involves searching, seeking the lost. That's why He saves us. Not just so we can go to heaven. That's the byproduct of our salvation is heaven. But our purpose, our direction in life is for you to, to seek somebody, to, to get a hold of God's vision. It may not be thousands. Like uh, they said, Billy Sunday, who lived in the turn of the century, he, he won over a million people to Christ. And they talk about Billy Graham, and, and you know he, he preached uh, to millions, and millions got saved. I'm not, God hadn't called. There's very, very few of those people. Jeremiah uh, spent 40 years preaching with no, absolutely no convert. And he was a weeping prophet. That's who wrote Jeremiah and Lamentations. What God wants us to get a hold of is the direction for your life and my life is just to seek people. Seek that they know Christ. Now, could it be as simple as this? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, you've been my neighbor. I just want to make sure you know the Lord. Oh, yeah, I know the Lord. Is that satisfactory? Well, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And they may go to a different flavored church that maybe we don't necessarily agree with. But is that good enough? Well, hey, it's, yeah, I think it's good enough. If you feel leadership, we're going to talk about this in just a moment. If you feel the Holy Ghost nudging you to go deeper, because you know as well, that, hey, guys, I'm going to split you, shepherd. Son, yeah. Do you not see? I can see you. Okay. We'll talk out. You you need to separate now, or do you want you want to, you can be good. Second time, I've, you're sitting there giggling, and laughing. So God gives us purpose, and our purpose is to seek the lost, is to educate too, which I'm trying to do, my son. And some of y'all are probably going to bless his heart. Well, you mean you need to because things aren't going to go too well. As much as I preach about it, paying attention, paying attention, my own son don't do it. I guarantee you some of y'all watched him back there doing what he's doing. And you'll go home and say, the preacher's kids get to do whatever they want. In order for us to focus, there must be a cooperation with the Spirit of God. And this is what I was telling you to. Will you cooperate with the Spirit of God? Will you cooperate with what does that mean? Simplest way we don't cooperate them is at the end of service when we have invitation and the Holy Spirit is saying, you need to go pray and you go, no. Holy Spirit says, you need to go pray and you say, no. Holy Spirit says, you need to go pray and you say, I can do it right here. I can do it right here. But you don't. You just sit there and wait until it says amen. Now, some of you may not fall in that category. Some of you may pray, and I, I'm not trying to uh, bicker or, 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 or deliberate the, 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 the differences of facts. I'm not trying. And by the way, if you're doing that while I'm, while I'm preaching, that tells me you, you're you in more trouble than you really realize. When someone's trying to educate you and trying to give you some more information to, to learn and grow by, and you're trying to figure out how you can get out of it and how, how it doesn't apply to me. And, oh, they're not talking to me. They're talking to that person over there. Is there anybody who wants to stand right now and just say, I'm all right, I, I, I do everything right? I soul win all the time and I, and I do everything perfectly. You're telling me God, God can't, God, you can't cooperate with God and say maybe you need to do something a little different or you need to try a little different? Uh, hello? 
I don't see the aisles being, I don't see tons of people getting saved. Do you? Remember, remember several years ago, Keely, when she first came home, and I know she's my daughter, it just popped in my mind, but she called and she said, I think six kids got saved on the bus route. Now, you may say, well, there's this easy believism, but I said, what'd you do, Keely? She goes, I just ask. I just ask. She cooperated with the Holy Ghost, and she asked. So our purpose involves seeking the lost. So let's focus on people. Let's focus on others. In order to focus, there must be cooperation. Uh, that must start with a complete yielding to God's desires. Acts, Acts 4.31 says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. They were uh, shaken where they were assembled uh, together, and, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the Word of God with boldness. Now, how can we apply that to us today? Notice what it says. And when they prayed... The place was shaken where they assembled together. So they were assembled together. They weren't on a Zoom call. They were assembled together. They prayed. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And yes, that's, that's a necessity as a believer. We have to ask to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We're leaky vessels. And then they had to open their jaws. They spake. They had to, they had to talk. And it said they talked with boldness. So cooperate. That's really maybe I need time. Why don't we cooperate with the Holy Ghost? I've been lately. I've, I've found this uh, little this show about uh, border security in the UK. Have y'all seen this? Where it's just the airplanes and the people come in and they 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 notice some kind of weird activity or they scan the their, their their luggage and they pull the luggage in and it's I'm I'm blown away. Keely was blown away too. We we think a lot of like how, people are so dumb. One to try to try to you know smuggle drugs in the in the country and then when they got them on there, they says uh, you want to declare anything? And they go no. Nope. You want to cooperate? And they're like, no. And they got them red-handed. A lot of it's cigarettes, you know, coming from UK, whatever. They, they only allowed so much or whatever. But there's people, and they won't cooperate. Does that help their case at all? No. So when we don't cooperate with the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God's kind of nudging you, and we, we go like this, and nudging you, and you go like this, nudging you. Or I, I like this. Because it happens to me when I hear other preaching, um, when the preacher's preaching and something hits you right between the eyes and you don't like it. And you think, how did he know? And, well, the Holy Ghost knows. The Holy Ghost is not trying to kick us in the shins and make us feel bad. The Holy Ghost wants us to repent. So when you repent, you feel better, don't you? When you say, God, you know what? I've really been, uh, I've really been uh, uh, thinking I'm okay because I'm doing it better than them. I've done it again. I've done it before. I've won some people. I've done it in the past. We make all sorts of excuses. But you know what we're doing? We're dumbing down the Holy Ghost. We're, we're saying to the security office, officer of heaven that you're stupid and I'm wise because I'm going to tell you what I don't have or what I am doing. And it's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We're going to have to answer to God for that. So cooperate with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit wants people to be saved more than we do. He, he has supernatural power that we do not have, that can convict, that will convict lost people of their sin. They will, that He will convict of righteousness and convict us of even judgment. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He knows exactly what's going on in lost people's lives and the thoughts as we are talking with them. The only the Holy Spirit has the power to regenerate a person into a new creature for Christ. Therefore, it only makes sense that if we hope to evangelize anyone effectively, that we should cooperate with them and rely on the Holy Spirit. Do you ever get in places where there are other people and ask the Holy Ghost, do you want me to talk to this person? He may say no. He may say, no, don't talk to others. Because i got somebody else lined up here that's going to cooperate with me. It's better fitted for that person. That person can say it the right way better than you can. Or maybe, uh, you know, you, you, you need to, this. I need you over here. Do you ever say, I want to cooperate with you, Holy Ghost? Effective seeking or evangelism is actively cooperating with the Holy Spirit as He works to open the eyes of the lost people and bring them to God. When you share the gospel, the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom that you, you did not know you had. 
when you actively allow God to work in your life, He's going to give you the wisdom. He's going to pull up those verses that you say, I can't quote. He's going to pull up those, that doctrinal understanding of salvation and He's going to help you. He also gives you sensitivity uh, you could not possibly have on your own. Sensitivity to a person's condition or, or what they've gone through. You have compassion that only can be uh, defined as biblical. Most unsaved in the world are not unreachable. They're just simply unreached. We think they're not going to want it. Well, I've talked to them a hundred times. Now let me hit that just a minute. If your light is always rejected, could it be that they're seeing something else, some darkness in your life? If your light's always rejected, it's so hard. It's hard to win your own family. It is. It's hard to win because they know. They know. Like my family knows me is not as a. Uh, a pushing 50, um, mildly overweight, bearded guy. They know me as, you know, an eight-year-old little brother. So it's hard. They don't think I... And it's, getting, it's, it's changing as we get older. We're all realizing that we're, everything hurts, so we, we're more compassionate with each other. But do you think that maybe if you the person you keep talking to, maybe it's time you, you mind the Holy Ghost and, and confess some things to that person. Confess where you were wrong in the past. Confess where you, you sinned in front of them. Confess where you made terrible decisions. Even though it may not change their mind, it at least clear you with, with you and God. Cooperating with the Spirit of God is useless if we don't have these things, these three obvious things I'm going to go with this, this evening. Uh, truths pulled from our text this, this evening that enables us to focus on others. Number one, uh, for us to be able to reach the lost, there has to be an obvious love. Not a, not a notch. Do you really give a rip about that person standing in line at Walmart? Do you really care if they die and go to hell? So if you're going to win anybody, if you're going to let the Holy Ghost use you, you're going to cooperate with the Holy Ghost, you've got to have a real sensitivity, a sensitivity an obvious love. The automatic the love automatically creates a seeking. It creates a focus. It creates the ability of forgiveness for others. You're not looking at people and saying, that's a deadbeat. That's, a, that's someone that uh, makes our life miserable. He's a Democrat. You know, you're not automatically saying those things. You're, saying, you're looking at that person and, and they're looking at you and you talk to them and you're concerned about their life, concerned about uh, what kind of groceries they're buying or whatever, uh, what's going on in the world, uh, that you, uh, you actually, it's obvious that you care. You have a care. Maybe you can even uh, dumb it down to, I care about you. This love is on, uh, is, is, is on what others are needing rather than our selfish needs. Most of the time we don't witness because we don't have time. We don't have time because we don't make time. They need, now I'm not saying every time you go that you have, you, um, you, you obey uh, the Holy Ghost. You cooperate with the Spirit of God. And if you know you're going up somewhere or whatever, uh, in just your day-to-day -day life, ask the Spirit of God, Lord, would you put somebody in my life? Lord, is there possibly somebody I could talk to? Uh, would God, would you use this gospel track uh, uh, that would reach, reach someone? They need the love of God in their life. The lost do. They need the hope of eternal salvation. When we begin focusing on others, uh, uh, our love for them moves to a place where we want them to have more than material things. Our kids, our friends, our families, we, we want to reach the lost. We want them to have what we have, right? Why would, it, why would God want anybody else to come to our church if we don't appreciate what He's given us? I've seen this over the years and God's put it in my heart over the years. You, you, you think, well, man, you know, our church is not that bad. You know, it's a pretty good church and all that. But God knows our hearts. And God knows whether or not he can, he can trust us to put half a dozen new converts in here where we're going to treat them like dirt or just like, oh, you're a little stinky girl. You're a little, you're a little stinky boy. Hello? Got kind of quiet, didn't it? Or you're black. Or you're Mexican. Or you're Latina. Or you're something different than me. You're the poor people. Or you're too rich. Or whatever. I mean, it gets, whatever it might be. You may have faults against other people. Oh, a mixed couple, all that, you know. Hey, did you know that we're a mixed couple with God? Hello? Some of y'all choked out on that, but hey, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a purebred Jew. I'm not perfect. God's perfect. He, hello? So the obvious love makes you want to be close, want the best for other people. We want them close to, uh, to be eternally protected, to, to, to be saved eternally. 1 Peter 4 8 says, Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. 
So if we're going to win the lost, if we're going to reach the lost, there has to be an obvious love, care about others. There has to be a conscious, uh, you're cooperating with the Holy Ghost. You're, you're asking the Holy Ghost, what would you want me to do? How do you want me? Yeah, you care more about the lost than yourself. Because your faith has grown to the place that God is going to take care of you. That doesn't mean that you're just like an elephant in a china shop, but that you mean that you're, you're, it's wielding the sword of the truth. Means it, uh, someone that's a good swordsman isn't just wailing it, slinging it around. You're going to throw your shoulder out. But someone that's a good swordsman has a direct, and they look. Haven't you seen those, like, you know, those you know, fencing, and they just go, like Zorro. Have you ever seen that Zorro? Zorro just goes, and it just, Zorro, you know, he carves his name into this. It's, it's precision. You see, the Holy Ghost is precise. If we would just yield to Him and cooperate with Him and, and let Him speak through us and fill us and empower us. And then number two, uh, if in order to reach the lost, there has to be an obvious ownership. This means it's my job. You have ownership of your job. This is my job. This is my ministry. It's not Pastor Chris. Don't ever say that's Pastor Chris's church. It is not my church. I pass, This is my ministry. But it's God's church. My, my, my ministry is to preach the gospel, is to try to help people. It's my responsibility to do that. It's God's commission on my life. Colossians 1.10 says that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So when, when, when must we make a commitment to a relationship of the lost? When must we do that? I think we need to do it as soon as we get saved. You invest your attention and you invest your energy. And then, then you'll take ownership. You ever, you, you know what um, uh, a squatter, squatter's rights is? Some of you know? I, if, and now tell me, holler out if I'm wrong. If, if, if I take care of a piece of property, let's say adjacent to me for a matter of years, I upkeep it, I keep landscaping and all that, I could... I could basically have a squatting right on that. Is that right? You maintain it. You care for it. It, it becomes your... And sometimes we probably take care of parts of other people's yards we don't know because it's just adjacent to us. I know that there's squatters, right? If you go into somebody's house, you can squat. You can sit down. You can <laughs> go with me here. And, uh, uh, and after a while, you, you can just stay there. They have to legally try to get you out. There's a thing going around now, a scam, where people can go get your, your mortgage. And this is a little bit different, but you get your mortgage information, and they can actually pretend to be you, get all that information, and take out a loan on your house. Yeah, be, be wary. That's just, but here's this. If we're going to win the loss, they have to see that it's, this is what I do. This isn't what I have to do. Uh, you want to be terrible? Oh, Oh, by the way, I need to talk to you about Jesus because my pastor expects me to. That would be terrible. They need to see that you have an obvious love, but also an obvious, an obvious ownership. That this is my job. This is what I'm not trying to skate it. I'm not trying to get out of it. But ultimately, our, our culture today is doing everything they can to retire as quick as they can so they can do whatever they can, whatever they want, when they want. You know what I tell uh, other pastors away? They say, well, how does it work to do that? I said, we got retirees, escapees, and refugees. Because everybody's on vacation. Now, some of you aren't, but I'm just, as a general thing, we work too much, we got this going on, that got going on. But when I go to some churches and I see leadership in the churches, people that they, it's obvious that they take ownership of their salvation, ownership of the Great Commission, and they're going to do what they can. They, they stay, come before, they stay after, uh, they work in the ministry, they teach, they do. That's part of their Christian life. It's not just, well, let me do everything I want to do and let me squeeze in Jesus and maybe a couple witnesses, hey, you need to go to heaven, throw out a go, gospel tracts. The shepherd didn't get someone to someone else to seek the lost sheep. The woman didn't call for others to seek that coin. And a lot of churches are hiring their soul winning teams. A lot of churches are let's hire somebody, let's pay somebody to go knock doors. So we got to do. I know uh, Russell Anderson pays pays the Filipinos a dollar a day to knock doors. Is that wrong? Well, they ought to do it because they love Jesus, but I maybe mean, the benefit, I mean, there's eternal rewards. I, we can talk about that later. Do you realize when they started seeking the sheep and the coin, they focused on what they owned and sought after it? 
they took ownership that the, these souls there is part of my my ownership of I need to seek them I need to help them I need to tell them it may be just a gospel track it may be just a, a word fitly spoken like apples of golden pictures of silver it may just be uh, some kind word that God loves you hey he died for you it may just be something that simple I, I I think it's dangerous to say you have to do it in this mold this shape I think you have to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. Some people, you're just going to have a fleeting statement. Some people, you may just have time to give a gospel track, even if that. Some people, you just may say, God loves you. Some people, you can sit down and talk with them or call them later, but you just need to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. The sheep, the coin, your family, your neighborhood, your city, your country, the, your world, that's what we need to take on. Hey, this is something we need to win. 2 Corinthians 5.19, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the, their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. So in order for us to, to go forth and to have a ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people through the gospel message, we have to be reconciled to God. In other words, uh, simply stated, you've got to be right with God. If you ain't right with God, you're not going to give a care in the world of the lost people. You're going to say, go to hell then. I don't care about you. And you may not say that, but by the lack of your actions or concern. But we've got so comfortable and we have checkmarked and said that's appropriate, that's okay. Uh, there's only certain people are supposed to be doing this. Where do you get that doctrine? We're all supposed to be telling people about it. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. What is that? That's, that's preaching. It's telling people what God did for you. Amen. So th this world will point their finger at us and at the great white throne judgment, if we fail to seek them, no one will have bloody hands because they do not win the unsaved, but rather because they do not warn the unsaved. See, it's not my job to save people. It's not your job to save people. We're just, our job is to warn them. And it is uncomfortable at times. You don't like, to, you don't like it when lost people get upset. You're just trying to help them. But you know what they've done? Just like when you see the liberals and conservatives, the, the liberals, they, they scream and yell and they throw and they kick and they scream and the conservatives go, okay, okay, I'll stop. Isn't it? That's why Calvinism is infiltrating the Baptist churches like no other, anything else. It is, it's, it's a resurgence like none other time. Or just let's just come and like, we might as well just start crossing ourselves and say, I'm spiritual because I showed up. Soul winning is the opposite of soul losing. That's a thought, isn't it? I'm surprised I wrote that. I, I may not have. <laughs> we see great ownership. But then there's one last thing there's an obvious urgency. See, if we're going to win the loss, there's got to be an obvious urgency. Now, the ur urgency has to be balanced with your ability. Now, in my early years, I had an urgency. Let's go, let's go, let's go, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I would want to drag everybody behind. And when you start dragging people, they get their face in the mud. You know, they just, they fall down and you just, then you got to worry about them. But you need to balance this and uh, obey the Holy Ghost of God, cooperate with Him and say, Lord, uh, what is the urgency? May maybe it's a... Uh, uh, having Bible studies. Maybe it is uh, just talking with them. Maybe take, taking somebody out to lunch. Maybe it's just sending a letter of, 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 of telling somebody. Uh, I remember the, the, when, when, you really so, when you really love something or someone and you lose it, there's a sense of urgency, isn't there? When Shepard was just about two, maybe less you'll correct me, and we lived over here in your house, Shepard learned how to get out the door. And we literally blinked, and Shepherd was gone. And it was before we had a fence. And all, I don't know about you, but can you imagine? We were freaking out. We went out the front and the back door, and I think, Leslie, you found him out in front of the... Who? Keely found him out in front of the church. In just literally 30 seconds, or it seemed like maybe it was a minute, he went from our back door, that back door, back, all the way to here. There was a sense of urgency to find him. Because all it would have taken him to go on the road and somebody not paying attention that I wouldn't have a son today. 
So if we're going to win the loss, there's got to get a little bit of sense of urgency. I love my son. That's why I tell him the truth. That's why I embarrass him in front of the class. I'm, I'm, I'm glad right now he's worried about what's going to happen at home. Shouldn't he? Shouldn't that way be? I mean, we're going to have to, are we concerned about what's going to happen in heaven? Yeah. So urgency reveals their need of use of them. We need them to bless God. We need them to help us reach the world. We need lost people to get saved to help us. We need their love. We need their teachable spirits. We need their counsel. Some of you were wicked as hell and you would testify, gave you time. You, you would talk about that you're a drunk or you're a drug user or you're a horrible person, but God saved you. And look what God's doing with you now. Amen. But we need more of those. The church don't need to be perfect, filled with perfect people. We need church filled with God perfecting people. They, they create purpose for us. It's been, someone has said, we need another youth pastor. Uh, well, yeah, we do. But I'm not going to hire one. We've got people in, in this church that could do it. I'm not going to hire anybody unless God tells me different. Hire somebody from outside to do a job that we can do as a church. We can love on them kids. We can take care of them kids. We only want somebody to hire so we don't have to. I think I'm, about, I'm going to hire somebody. Can I, leadership, can I get authorization to hire somebody just to preach for me? I'm not going to preach anymore. I'm just going to sit and listen. And, just... and I know what some of you are saying. Well, you're gone all the time. I'm preaching though. I'm preaching though. I know how you think. Because we all alike. You see, lost people that get saved create purpose for us. They went to seek that which was lost quickly. A sense of urgency. I'm not talking about after you leave church that you go up and you open up, you're going to go to hell if you don't get saved. I'm not talking about that. Are you awake now? We, got, we can go another 30 minutes. I'm not, I'm not telling you act like a fool. Or act like you're some strange, you know, you might want to text somebody, hey, I've been thinking about you, praying for you. Colossians 4, 5, walk in wisdom toward them without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always, always with grace, seasoned with salt, that, you may, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Uh, they, they may die without uh, Jesus Christ. You may die without Jesus Christ. But must I go in empty-handed? Focusing on others will change our life, our church. It's going to change heaven. Isn't it? It's going to change why you come to church. Let me, let me summarize this and I'm done. A lot of times we get, and I, I get this way too, I, get, I come to church because it, I like this part or I like that part, I enjoy this. But when all those things, there's been times, even recent years, where I didn't enjoy much of anything. But why did I come to church? For Him. And as long as I come to church for Him, He will, he will get us to where we will obey the, Him or we will be taken out. People who constantly win souls do not backslide. Let me say it. People who constantly want to win souls do not backslide. Well, how can we make a statement like that? Because if you're actively trying to win people to Christ, that means you're actively communing with the Holy Spirit. You're actively obeying God. You're cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Now, it, it, can we 24-7? I think we, we can while we're awake and while we commune that we, we actively, like even in tough jobs, you know, Miss Pat, I know you work in a, in, in a place. Can you actively say, you know, hey, y'all need, need to get, turn or burn? No, but you can, little things like, you know, uh, they give you paperwork. God bless you. It God good today. You know, things like that. You can lay those seeds out there and, and then when somebody asks you a question, they can, they, they, you, can, you can tell them about Christ. Will you seek God to fill you tonight so that you, you might lead some others to Christ? Will you ask God for an obvious love for them, an obvious ownership for them, an obvious urgency? Will you cooperate? Will you cooperate? When you watch those little shows and the police officer pulls the people over and they say, can, uh, can I search your car? And they say, no. What do you think? 
There might be a few people, well, I'm, I'm exhibiting my constitutional rights. You don't have right to search my... But most of them, they don't want you to search because there's something wrong. They don't want to cooperate. You know why we don't want to cooperate with the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost gets a, gets a hold of that area of your life. You're going to have to give that up. What are we, this vision, this theme this year is, we just have eight more weeks. We have a building almost done. Really. We have a bus ministry that went up to 16. The potential to get that double that is, but we can't, and I won't allow it until we have people ready to help them. The worst thing I did at Bible Baptist Church in these 20 years is we built up, I built the Master Club program up, and it overwhelmed all of us, all of us, overwhelmed us. And we were, not, we were not able to teach them the way they needed to be. And I'm not, I'm not blaming it. That was my fault. It's my fault. Because I said, we can, we can bring them in. And we can. We can fill this thing up and fill that one up too. But if we don't have the people to edge it, to love them, to have a hobbyist love for them. If we don't have the people that have an urgency to talk to them, they just say, shut up, sit down. Then what's the point? So we can tell other people we're a big church or bigger church. That's all irrelevant in the eyes of God. I think what's, what's important that we're faithfully obeying the Holy Ghost. The next person that you run into that you, you don't know if they're saved or lost, ask the Holy Spirit, God, what do I need to say to them? Would you, would you please stand? I don't know what that was, but maybe some of Let's all stand. <clears throat> Lord, you, you've let us get out of church early this morning and tonight. I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, for a message that has challenged me once again in my failures over the years, in my inabilities, my laziness. And Lord, I just pray you'd help me tonight to have some obvious love, obvious urgency. God, I, I need your help. I want to cooperate with you. Lord, I, I seem to always want something different than what you've given me. I can't be happy with what you've given me. Lord, you have blessed me with a great family, a great church, great people. We have our faults, Lord. I know I, I stand in the front and declare to you my faults tonight. Spirit of God, I pray you'd work in our hearts tonight. Maybe help us, the humble us, so that we would reach the lost. Starting with our families, our children, Lord, our, our church, maybe church friends, people that come occasionally. Help us just to take another step to obey and to, and to cooperate with you. Thank you. Anybody here tonight say, Preacher, I... God's dealt with my heart. I need, to, I need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit more. Would you slip your hand up? Yes, many of you. Anybody here tonight that would say, I, I, I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I'm not sure if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. I'm uncertain. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody in here like that? Is there anybody here that would like to see our church win more people? Would you raise your hand? Yes. Thank you. Where there's no vision, the people what? Perish. Must have a vision. We do not have to die for them. Jesus already did. We do not have to die for them. Jesus already did. But will we do our part what God the Holy Ghost tells us to do? Let's cooperate with the Spirit of God. Let's ask God to help. Let's pray for the lost ones. I know we have, uh, I was thinking Miss June, Brother Richard, uh, Brother, where he, uh, wish he's brother, he, he professes salvation, but he, just you pray for him. I think, is it Terry, Miss Jack? You would pray for Terry. And uh, some of y'all have kids just wayward and needs help. And uh, you may not be the one that wins them, but you certainly can be one that can give them another seed and give them a little bit of water. Love them in spite of it. I, Lord, I, the mistakes I've made of, of being too hard in the wrong places. Listen to what I said, being too hard in the wrong places. 
We need to learn to love people in spite of them because Jesus loves us in spite of us. I'm looking forward to better days, aren't you? Looking forward to healthier days. I told Melvin, I said, that he understands this. I'm going to go home and feel terrible because God gives me strength to be, feel good at church but as soon as church is over. Uh, you feel bad, but uh, that's all right. If God, is that okay? If God would do that for you, just gives you a little bit of feeling good. I told them kids up there at that chapel, they had about, I don't know, 50, 60 high schoolers. I told them about that Vojkovic guy. They never really heard of him. He was born with no arms, no legs. He's married, has kids, swims, drives. What was, what was the other guy? Uh, David Ring had an MS, and they said he never married. Never, he has like eight kids. Had a ministry for the last 35 years. And he said, I have cerebral palsy. What's your problem? <laughs> Come on. I, I heard him on Falwell's program back in the day. And I ordered that. I ordered that's paid 60 bucks for that uh, VHS. When I got it in, Farrell said, I want to I want to see that. I never watched it again. Gave it to him. Never seen it since. <laughs> what? Inter, inter, eternal investment. <laughs> eternal investment. Uh, but uh, uh, God, God need, hey, can God, can you get convicted? Are you beyond conviction? Shh. Be, be, very, be very cautious if you're beyond conviction. So we're going to dismiss. We're out early. Can you believe it? I'm just going to rattle on. Brother Frank, appreciate you. God bless you. Would you dismiss us?